One of the things that I like about video games is the lore. I'm kind of a lore junkie when it comes to figuring out, you know, all the little different secrets and the backstory of how a video game world gets to where it is. And the Fallout series is an absolute goldmine for lore, and Fallout 76 is no exception. Now for me, one of the most interesting places in Fallout 76 is Vault-Tec University. Now with the game being set in West Virginia, Vault-Tec University is based on the real-life West Virginia University located in Morgantown, West Virginia. And when I first arrived on the campus of Vault-Tec University in Fallout 76, I was really intrigued on how the state university wound up being owned by Vault-Tec and just where does this school fit into the greater story of Fallout 76. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick look at the history of the real West Virginia University. Then we're going to dive in, take a look at vault Tech University, see what we can uncover about it, and figure out where it fits in to the greater narrative of Fallout 76. So without further ado, let's get to it. So before we can start talking, about vault Tech University, we need to take a step back in time and actually talk a little bit about the history of the real West Virginia University. So the land for West Virginia University was first offered in 1866, one year after the American Civil War, and it was incorporated in 1867 as the Agricultural College of West Virginia. By order of the governor, in 1868, the school was renamed to West Virginia University, which is the name that it has today. And one bit of interesting trivia before we go a little bit further is the first graduate of West Virginia University was actually a man by the name of Marmaduke Dent. What a name, right? He was the first graduate in the year 1870, and he also went on to be the first postgraduate obtaining his master's just two years later. Now, a couple of the colleges that opened during the lifespan of West Virginia University, which would wind up playing a part in the story of Fallout, is the School of Medicine, which was opened in 1902, and the Physical Activity College, which was founded in 1932. Now, one of the biggest things that's notable about Fallout is the culture, the society, the technology, all of it's different than what we know. And most likely what had happened is after the end of World War II, technology and society tended to shift. And a lot of the culture, a lot of the music, the outfits of the 1950s, those sort of carried on. Nothing really changed. Technology grew and there's technology in the game that we don't have, but there's also technology that we have that they don't, you know, things like the microprocessor, smaller, easier to navigate computers, things like that. A lot of emphasis was put in the world of Fallout on weaponry, on building more militarized technology. So home personal technology didn't really develop the way that it did for us. Sure, people had access to the Mr. Handy robot line, but things like the laptop computer, the desktop computer, those really didn't evolve the way that they did for us. And the last major event that happened in the real world before this split was that Victorine Lewistall earned her Master's of Education from West Virginia University in 1945, making her the first African-American graduate of the university. So time progresses after Miss Lewistall earns her master's and the world of Fallout as we know it begins to form. And in the year 2031, vault purchases West Virginia University and takes over control of the university, renaming it vault University or VTU. The curriculum that you would normally expect at a college, a blend of liberal arts and sciences, that was completely changed. A lot of the liberal arts curriculum, English, history, things like that, those were stripped away in favor of things like medicine, psychology, physical education, engineering, things that would make people able to take over as overseers of the different vaults. And that was the main purpose 
of vault Tech University's existence was to create a pool of potential vault overseers and vault scientists to conduct the different experiments that vault Tech had planned for the vaults. As we know, not every vault in Fallout 76 nor in the Fallout universe was intended to be an actual safe haven. Many of them were designed to conduct different social experiments, and many of the social experiments were actually fairly gruesome, one of these being the vault overseen by Stanislaus Braun in Fallout 3, which put the residents of the vault into pods, and they lived in sort of a virtual reality fantasy land where Braun could control everything and live out his different and really kind of disturbing fantasies. Now, some of the alumni of vault Tech University include the Vault 76 Overseer who gives you the mission that you undertake throughout the story of Fallout 76, and two members of the Hornwright family, Penelope and Liam. Now, if you've played Fallout 76, you know how big the Hornwright Corporation was to Fallout's version of West Virginia. They were the largest mining company and they really dictated a lot of what happened with the mining industry there. And it just goes to show how important in that regard vault Tech University was to West Virginia and to the story of Fallout and the greater Fallout universe. Now, when you first arrive at vault Tech University, one of the things you'll notice is that it's really a fairly small campus. If you've ever visited a large co college campus, some of them can be hundreds of acres and square miles large. vault Tech University is comprised primarily of three buildings centered around a courtyard featuring a statue of Vault Boy. Now, the real life version of this is the Woodburn Circle at West Virginia University. These are three of the oldest buildings that are still standing on campus. And owing to the limitations of designing a game, the decision was made to make this the primary focus of what, what vault Tech University would be, as it's one of the most noticeable features of West Virginia University. And that's a really nice touch because it's done almost as a perfect recreation of the Woodburn Circle, and that's just really interesting on its own. Now, when you enter vault Tech University, what you're going to notice is many of the classes are centered primarily around the different fields that I mentioned earlier, medicine, physical education, things like that. There are large lecture halls, large computer labs, but noticeably a very small collection of faculty offices, as most of the liberal arts curriculum had been stripped away, replaced with things to make people able to take on a role within one of the different vault tech vaults throughout the United States. And one of the most important things that a student would do at vault Tech University during their fairly short time that they would have to attend is to propose an experiment. This would be their, their, this would be their senior thesis, similar to how if you were trying to get a bachelor's in, say, a liberal art or some type of science, you would have to either write a paper or develop some type of experiment to be tested, and you would have to defend this to a small collection of the faculty, either one professor or some type of thesis board. And in the case of vault Tech University, these would be the experiments. Now, if you wander through vault Tech University long enough, you'll stumble on the test vault. This is where senior graduates of vault Tech University would actually go to test out their senior theses. And the last senior thesis that was being tested on the day that the bombs dropped was that of one Drew Collingsworth. Drew Collingsworth had proposed the idea of creating a food paste. And if this sounds familiar, this is because there is a food paste item that can be found in Fallout 4 that was implemented at a number of the schools in the greater Boston area. Now, the difference being is that Drew Collingsworth's experiment was actually altered. Instead of testing the positive effects of the food paste, a placking agent was added to the food paste to test what would happen if people started to die from a food paste and how that would affect morale within the vault. 
Now, one thing to note is that when these experiments start, the vault is, is locked down for a month. For four weeks, the vault is locked down and the senior is treated as the overseer with other students operating in a similar, similar role that they would within the vault. And what happens is the food paste is terrible. Nobody in the vault wants to eat the food paste. So a black market begins to emerge for real food items and the food stores that had been put back are quickly expended. And that's an important note because when the bombs fell, Collingsworth and the rest of the students were locked away from the university. They didn't know what had happened. They didn't know that civilization as they knew it had come to a complete end. Now, over time during the four week period, tensions began to arise and Drew Collingsworth eventually tries to reach out to the faculty of Vault Tech University to try and get the lock reversed and get the vault unsealed. However, this doesn't work and when you finally arrive at Vault Tech University, it's actually possible to find the skeleton of Drew Collingsworth in the overseer's office bedroom. Now it's also important to note that there are several ghouls that can be found wandering the vault, so it raises the question of did the students actually manage to escape after the four week period, or are these ghouls those students, those students who unfortunately met a fate far more worse than death? That's a question that's not really answered, but it's a good little piece of speculation. So with this in mind, the question becomes, well, what does it all mean? Well, the number one thing to consider is Vault Tech took over a school. They took over a school. They took over a state-ran institution completely to further their own goals. And it begins to show just how much influence and how much power that Vault Tech had managed to acquire. They were able to capitalize on the fears of pure nuclear war and were able to take over state-ran institutions with little to no pushback. From everything I've seen, there's not really any significant evidence that I could find of the citizens of West Virginia really pushing back against Vault Tech. To them, it seems that they were willing to trade that control for the thought of being protected. And it really just goes to show how little Vault Tech truly cared for humanity. To them, the vaults and the citizens in them, they were an experiment. The vaults themselves were just petri dishes that they could put things into and test out all of these different theories. And it really just adds to the shadiness and the absolute just control that Vault Tech had in the days leading up to the Great War. And it's always fun to speculate how much Vault Tech contributed to the insanity, the depravity, the violence that persists throughout the Fallout universe. And it's possible that they had a big hand in it and they, by the end of society, had created a breeding ground for the overseers that were needed to stock these vaults to conduct these inhuman experiments. So that's all I have today about Vault Tech University. I'm actually going to link information from West Virginia University with a full timeline of the history of the university so that way you can see how the real West Virginia University has progressed to where it is today. And I'm also going to link the information for the Fallout Wiki. This is a great resource if you're a lore junkie like me. They include information about different sites, they include different terminal entries, holotapes, things like that. And it's a really good resource if you want to start peeling back the layers of the Fallout universe and to learn more information about the games. I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up. I hope you've learned a little something about Vault Tech University. 
and I hopefully it will convince you to maybe pick up the game and start exploring West Virginia yourself. See what different secrets that Appalachia has to offer. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed making it. If you have, drop a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll talk to you next time.